I have another knife review for you. Today it is the Lynx from Joker Knives of Spain. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this knife, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, I want to thank Joker Knives of Spain for sending me the Lynx. And uh, yeah, this is the third knife from Joker that I will have reviewed. And I can't tell you how impressed I am with them. If you're not familiar with Joker Knives of Spain, uh, please look at the links that I'm going to put in the video description because these have to be one of the best kept secrets. Maybe not so much of a secret anymore, but the quality that is in these knives as well as the design is uh, it's just way above its price point for sure. So yeah, what we'll do is I will close in on the knife. I'll give you some close-ups of it while I go through the specifications. And then of course, we'll do some testing. All right, what I thought I'd do is just give you some details on the sheath the knife came with before we get into the knife itself. So let me just take the knife out of the sheath for a second. So simple Kydex pancake sheath. Now, first thing you're going to notice is that the Kydex is a little bit thinner than it is on a lot of sheaths. And I was a little worried about retention, but uh, this has a slide lock retention device right here. And you can adjust the tension by turning the knurled knob right here to a point where you really, you if you slide it up and tighten it down, you're not getting the knife out of the sheath without a great deal of force, of course. So the idea, of course, is that you can have it locked in, slide it down, take it out, or what I've been doing is just adjusting the tension to a point where I don't have to slide it up and down, but have enough tension to keep the knife from falling out. Belt loop is heavy, heavy nylon webbing, which is attached to another piece of Kydex, which is attached to the sheath itself. And there is an attached ferrocerium rod with the matching micarta and red liner on the side. All right, let's just get the knife, put it back in the sheath so you can see how that works. So it's not a real hard snap when you get it in. That's because of the softness of the Kydex, but it is secure. And when you bring that lock up like that, it's very secure. And, uh, you know, I haven't got it so tight right now that I can't get it out, but I have it snug enough so I know that it's not going to fall out. Let's put the sheath aside and bring the knife back in. Okay, so... Uh, few things I'm going to do different for this review. I'm actually going to give you the specifications in metric. Somebody had commented that I seem to be only doing English and since I'm or, or Imperial and since I am Canadian, I should be using metric. So I thought I'd change things up. However, I will put all the specifications both in Imperial and in metric in the video description underneath. So blade length, 10.5 centimeters. I know just over four inches, right? Blade width, three centimeters. That's top to bottom or edge to spine. Blade thickness, four millimeters. So more than a more than an eighth of an inch, more close, closer to three sixteenths of an inch. And the weight of the knife is 190 grams. Now the steel is a Bowler N695. Good choice steel. It's not a super steel, but it is a good mid-range steel. Hardened to 58 on the Rockwell scale. The Scales or the grips themselves are a black canvas micarta with a red spacer in it. And uh, just a couple comments on this. When I got it, it was more polished than it is right now. I actually took a piece of sandpaper to it to roughen it up a tiny bit. And, uh, you know, it's you can do it either way. If you like it more polished, use a super fine sandpaper. I wanted it just a touch bit more rougher than it came just to give it a little bit more texture and grip. And it didn't take much, just a couple of passes with a rougher sandpaper and I was good. All right, let's take a look at the design of the blade. So what you can see, it is a drop point design. Actually, there is a curve right from pommel down to the tip. So there's an overall curve to the knife. It is a high saber grind with a secondary grind at the edge. It has an exposed pommel. Someone was asking me about exposed pommels recently and do I like them? Um, sometimes, okay. On this knife, it really does work for me. On a true bushcraft knife, I just assume it was smooth, but this does have a pommel that is exposed. It doesn't stick out a great deal and it does have some jimping on it. Of course, it has a stainless steel lanyard hole and a little piece of colorful cord, of course. Stainless steel pins running through and jimping across the top up here. Now, I'm just going to give you some profile. First off, I don't know if this is showing up. There's a bit of a relief on either side of the jimping. Yeah, that's showing up. Good. A bit of a relief there. 
just an extra touch. Does it make a huge difference? Well, I can certainly get purchase, and that is quite aggressive jumping as well. So I can certainly get purchase up there, yet when I'm moving up to do any carving with my hand, my web is not coming in contact with it. So yeah, I don't mind that at all. All right, let's take a look at the handle. Wide. This is wider than a lot of them are, and I do really appreciate that. The contouring is minimal. The palm swell is not very, very distinct. There's a slight flare to the top and a slight flare on the bottom. And as you can see, there, the palm swell on the bottom is only slight, and the choils are only slight, although there is more of a choil on the front to give it a bit more of a garb. Overall, not only a nice looking design, but a very nice design indeed. Look at the tip just to see how strong it is. It has plenty of tip strength, yet is fine enough. I've found with the drop point and the way the belly curves up towards it, that it works well for carving and doing intricate cuts in either notching or even spoon carving. This will work fairly well. How would I classify this knife? I wouldn't call it necessarily a purpose-built bushcraft knife. I would call it kind of an all-round knife, companion knife for the woods. Perfectly capable of all kinds of bushcraft tasks. Also capable of hunting, so skinning and game processing. Also capable of survival because it is plenty strong enough for a lot of those tasks as well. And with the exposed pommel, I was driving this into woods with a baton in this direction, just not so much to test it, but for some of the tasks of splitting that I was doing and wanted to get some tiny, tiny splits made out of a piece of wood. Yeah, okay, so those are, oh yes, and of course, a sharp, sharp 90 degree spine on the back. As you'll see, it'll strike the ferrocerium rod without any issue at all. So, very attractive knife, but does it perform? Well, let's see. All right, as per usual, I will keep the demonstrations to a minimum just to show a few of the skills that I would use this knife for, and that'll start with batoning. So I have a piece of maple here, and uh, it's in really good, hard shape, so I don't see foresee any issues with batoning through this. Maple runs about not quite two inches in diameter, and I have a piece about 16 inches long. All right, let's just run it down. What I want to do here is quarter it so that I can use each of the quarters for a different demonstration. Hardwood. But no issue. No issue at all. Some nice hardwood. All right, let's just finish those off, those quarters. little off-center on that one, but that's okay. All right, very good. So, no problem batoning, and I didn't expect any. I have been using this for some time. I've experienced no chips, no rolls, no, no real dulling of the knife. It's still very, very sharp. I see no glints off of the edge. Yep, still performing just as well as it was when I first got it. All right, let's set up for the next demonstration. All right, a quick test of the cross batoning capabilities of this knife. And all I will do for this demonstration is just create an L7 type of notch as if I was making a tent peg. That kind of a notch is pretty representative of a lot of the notches you'll make for a great number of projects around a campsite. So that's the one I'll use. Cross batoning can be a little hard on knives sometime uh, due to the grain structure in the wood, but I have used this good mount and I know it's not going to be an issue for this knife at all. So I have my stop cut and all I need to do now is just cut in the relief. Nice hard wood. Maybe I'll just go a little further with it. Yep, and just clean that out. A little bit more. There we go. Okay, so there's my L7 notch created for my tempeg. Now, of course, I have to put a point on the other end. 
Right, I guess as far as putting a point on a tent peg, there's a number of ways you like to do, but for demonstrations and testing of a knife, I like to use the chest lever cut for a couple of reasons. One, it tells me how comfortable it is to hold the knife in the reverse grip like this, and two, it gives me an idea how much pressure is needed to draw the knife through the wood. So uh, let's get that started. Wow, okay, that's a good deep cut. Yep, it's biting in. So, you know, the Sabre grind is kind of a jack of all trades. It's not a full flat grind. It doesn't go all the way to the spine. There is still some full thickness of the material here. It is pretty high on this knife, just the same, but it is also not like a Scandi grind that has a minimal, if any, in some cases, secondary edge. So the bite is never as good as it is with a Scandi grind. Not far behind though. And the slicing, is never quite as good as a full flat grind. So it's with that in mind that a Scandi or a Sabre grind like this will kind of do most of the, all of the tasks reasonably well, if not as well as a knife that's dedicated to a purpose like slicing and cutting meat or wood processing like a Scandi grind is. But I'd say it did a pretty good job. Let's just finish the top of this knife off. So uh, once again, all I'm doing here is just taking a little edge off the very top of the tent pegs called chamfering the corners. And uh, the concept here is that if you drive this into the ground with a mallet, either the back of your ax or a piece of wood, then you're not gonna split the piece out. Really, that only makes a lot of difference if you plan on using this over and over again. But okay, some simple tasks with the knife in the forward grip as well as the reverse grip. All right, let's move on to feather sticking. Okay, as far as feather sticking going, I, uh, again, this is maple, so it's a good hardwood for using. Cut, I think, probably last fall, so while it is dry, it is not as dry as some dead standing often can get. So this should work pretty good. I chose a piece that has some pretty great strain or straight grain on this side, although I do see a knot here, but I plan on staying away from that. I'm not feathering the whole stick. Actually, I'm gonna be starting on the outside edge. Normally you would start on the inside edge, the, towards the center of any quartering, as you can see with the pith or the, the heartwood running down. But in this case, that's where the knot is. So that's why I wanna stay away from that. And I'll just work the outside edge. Should still work well enough. Let me just turn the camera down a tiny bit so you can see what's going on here. First couple curls to establish a stop point. And I can start moving it. Running my knife straight down will give me a curl that goes straight up. If I run the knife at an angle, it'll curl off to one side, and if I pull it backwards like this, it'll curl off in another direction. So this is making the curls go this way, and then if I run the knife in this direction, the curls go this way. I'm getting some pretty fine curls with this. There is a misconception that you have to have a Scandi knife to do this, and of course that's absolutely not the case. You can do this with any knife that you want to do a little bit of practice with. It is true that a Scandi ground knife will do this a little bit easier in most cases, but it comes down to the practice you put in on any given knife. So a saber grind like this, Again, not so much a compromise, just a jack of all trades, master at none, is doing a great job of feathering this piece of maple. Let's see if I can get a few really small ones down here. The type you would light with your ferrocerium rod. So 
So you can see the little, little tiny ones right down here that would take a spark from a ferrocerium rod. So not a big uh, feather stick, of course. I just kept it short for the purposes of this video. All right, one more thing we expect of our knives is scraping. And I can tell you now, this is going to excel at scraping. So scraping at a task is something we expect of our outdoor knives. Now, I will tell you that a sharp 90 degree spine like this knife has, has a lot of uses but it can be a little uncomfortable for fine carving and the reason is of course is that your thumb is going to be resting on the edge but you know that's a small sacrifice to make when you see how many things you can do with the back edge of your spine you're really using this for almost as much as you would with the sharp edge but you're preserving the sharp edge for making little curls like this so i just have a piece of well more or less rotten wood here it's not going to fall apart on me only because i didn't want to do this directly on the ground it's quite windy here today and I'm trying to block the wind so we don't lose all of our scrapings here. I did want to show how you can scrape a piece of wood. So it's just easy. And why would you scrape a piece of wood? Up, oh, same reason I'm scraping the fat wood. Sometimes you don't have fat wood. Uh, I don't always have fat wood. I seem to always have birch bark. So it's not something I do often, but just the same. You can see that this spine will still scrape wood just like you might with fat wood something that will go a long ways to catch and spark if you don't happen to have some fat wood i think we'll throw that on in a second just for the fun of it but let's do that with the fat wood this is some it's almost like glass this fat wood Ooh, that smell love it love the smell of fat wood just beautiful. All right, there we go. Oh, got to get out my ferrocerium rod. Yep. Make sure it had a good edge on it or a good surface. Throw in those little curls. Throw in those curls. And with the seconds, I have the start of a fire. All right, let's uh, wrap this video up. All right, a few closing thoughts on the links from Joker Knives of Spain. So, you know, I do like my purpose-built bushcraft knives, but they're not always the right thing to take into the woods, especially if you can foresee yourself doing things more than just wood processing. So if you do see yourself as a hunter or processing meat or any other type of food you would this type of a grind actually is much much better than a scandinavian grind for that maybe not as good as a full flat grind but much better than a scandinavian grind so if you're looking for an all-rounder certainly the saber grind knife is the choice for most people i think it is i certainly i love this knife i really really do of the joker knives that i've tested out so far i have to say this is my favorite by well, not by far. The others are really nice knives, without question. But this is the one I would pick up most knives or most days that I went out into the woods if I was uh, limited to my Joker knives. Yeah, once again, these Joker knives are just a quality, a cut above, to excuse the pun, a cut above so many other knives on the market. They have all the features of the higher end knives. They may not have the super steels, but I'm not convinced that super steels are worth the premium you're paying for them anyway. A good middle of the road steel will take you a lot further. Uh, it's e usually easier to maintain, easier to keep sharp, and will not run you the big dollars that the super steels will. Yeah, this is a good choice. It really does work for me in terms of fitting my hand and feeling comfortable. Now, I didn't show any demonstrations using the exposed pommel, but you could use it for a little bit of hammering, I guess, with it. Or as I have done is I have tapped this into the wood so that I could use the edge and draw wood across it and for making some small, small splits in wood as well. And uh, that's without driving it in so deep that I have to worry about the test. Speaking of test, I think I mentioned this, but uh, this is that piece of wood handy right here. Let me just grab that piece of wood. Something that we 
don't always do with our knives because we tend to think in terms of carving knives. But if you had to create an implement out here, be it a spoon or uh, uh, a la not a ladle so much, but a, a flipper of some type for your fry pan, then you do want to do some finer carving. I mean, you could leave it very, very rough, of course, but a knife like this with a good fine tip like that, you can use, of course, in reverse and draw it backwards to yourself. And what that does, you can see I'm getting some quite nice shavings off of this. And then when I get into a point where I want to create a, a, a curve, that's when I can use the knife to work it in, just thumb on the back of the knife, make sure you can see what I'm doing here. And you can get that curve going and run down to the edge again. So having a point, uh, okay, just a quick little saddle notch is all it is, but the, the idea being you can use that tip and get into some fine places that if it's much blunter than this, it's, you're going to have trouble getting in. So that tip just kind of balance is the balance or the compromise between, between being very, very fine and therefore fragile and very, very thick and not too functional. Okay, I just wanted to add that extra little piece in it. So with everything I like about this knife, is there anything that I would like to see different? Well, when I first brought the knife out into the woods uh, a few months ago and started using it, one of the things I felt was it could really use some thumb scallops right here, somewhere to place my thumb when I'm holding it in reverse grip. But if you look at here, it is rounded off in this direction. So in fact, I don't think I really need those thumb scallops. If it was any more of a 90 degree edge there, I might, but I can put my thumb there now with a whole lot of comfort and uh, I'm not disadvantaged by not having thumb scallops on. So I'll actually retract that as, as something that's needed. What would I improve on this? Actually, I'm not sure if there's anything. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit thicker, but then again, XL hands, to double XL hands. I would say the majority of people are going to find this to be the perfect size for their hands. Okay, enough glowing over this knife. It is a really good value, and of course, I'll put all the information I have, both in Imperial as well as Metric, in the video description, as well as the links to the website at Joker Knives of Spain. And there are a few other places here in Canada. Bushcraft Canada has these. I think I'll put the link to it uh, on their website as well if you want to buy it from a Canadian distributor. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because it will take all the, uh, make all the difference. Bye for now.